Now in this video, things are going to get a little more complex. We're going to actually set up a SIP connection between the two different groups. We're going to do that by setting up a SIP trunk. And then later on, we'll actually create mainline numbers for both of the different groups. And then we'll place a test call and show that when you call those mainline numbers from either side, it's going to ring both of the phones. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to get it set up to where if you want to call the, ex the actual extensions, not the mainline number, we'll have it set up to where you can send an invite from the phone where you dial the four digit extension, you can dial the seven digit, the 10 digit, or even the full extension. No matter which one of these you dial, the local PBX, so in this scenario, the group two PBX is going to send over the full number. So if you dial just the four digits, 0101, what will be sent over to the other group will be the plus one, five, 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 six, 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 zero, one, zero, one. Now that other PBX, that remote one, is going to strip it down and send only the extension of the phone, none of the other digits that were prefixed, and then that will actually ring the extension 101. So let's go ahead and jump into it and get these configurations knocked out. We're now ready to create our trunks on our servers, which point to the other group server that we're working with. In order to do so, we go under connectivity, trunks, and then we click add trunk and we select the option for Chen underscore PJ SIP trunk. For the trunk name, it's going to be trunk and then where it says OO, you'll put the odd number. I'm in group zero one. So that will be my odd number. And where it says EE, you put the even number there. For the outbound caller ID, we're going to put a string that you can copy from the uh, lab guide. And you're going to want to replace the X's with your group's number. I'm group 01, so I'll replace it with group 01. Next, we have to go under PJ SIP settings and where it says secret, we'll paste in from the lab guide, the string that we're provided. And for the odd number, you'll put in uh, the group's odd number and the even number will be the group's even number. For me being 01, I'm doing 0102. For authentication, we're going to do both. And for registration, we're going to say none. For the SIP server, we're going to put in the IP address of the far end. So for me being 01, I have to put in 02. I'm going to go back to the general page and at this point I can hit submit. But as you see, I get an invalid outbound caller ID message. That's because I copied and pasted it from the Word document and for some reason it doesn't like that. So I have to correct it here and I'll hit submit again and then apply config. Now we need to make our outbound dialing rule and that will be under connectivity and we'll say outbound routes. We'll click add outbound route and we'll give it a name and you say two group and then change ZZ to be the two digit ID of the group that you're working with. And then we'll go down to the section called trunk sequence for matched routes. And we'll select the trunk that we recently configured. Now we want to go under the dial patterns. And this is where we're going to specify the patterns which should be matched and sent out over this trunk. And we'll have five different patterns. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. In the fifth one, we're going to prepend um, plus one, five, 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 six, six, six. Then in the one above that, we're going to do plus one, five, five, five. And then in this one, we'll do just plus one. And then here will be only a plus. To save some time, I've already filled out the uh, matched patterns. And as you can see here, we have plus one and then an N followed by uh, nine X's right here. The next pattern is one N nine X's, N nine X's, and then we go on to N with six X's. And then this last pattern is a little bit different. 
the last two uh, characters are going to be XX, but the first two characters right here will be the group ID of your partner group. I'm group 01, and so my partner group is group 02, therefore my last pattern will be 02XX. We now want to click Submit, and then Apply Config. Once this is done reloading, we're going to configure something called a ring group, which allows us to call a single number. And when you call that single number, it will actually ring the different extensions given the way that we're going to configure it. So we'll go under application and go down to ring groups. And then we'll click add ring group. And for the ring group number, I'm going to make it 100. And we're going to give this a description of ring extension 101 and 102. And then here in the extension list, you can select the, the uh, different extensions pretty easy here. And then I will scroll down to the bottom and say uh, destination if no answer. I'll have that terminate the call and we'll just leave it to hang up. So we'll click submit and apply the configuration. Something I want to point out in here is that the um, ring strategy, we left it to ring all. And as you can see here on the screen, it will ring available channels until one answers. That's the default. So it's going to ring both of these endpoints when uh, somebody dials the number 100. So let me go ahead and just click submit here, even though I didn't do anything and I'll click apply config as well. But that was just me going in there to show you what the ring strategy was set up to. We now need to make an inbound route so that the other group can call into our system. And in order to do that, we'll go to connectivity inbound routes, and then we'll click add inbound route. I'm going to give it a description of main line. And then for the DID here, this will be zero one because that's my group. And so we want plus one, five, six, five, 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 six, 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 and then your group ID followed by zero, zero. Now we want to set the destination and I'm going to set that to be a ring group. And it already automatically selects the ring group that I just created. Click submit down here in the right corner and then the upright corner hit apply config. Now that the page is done loading, we'll open up our micro SIP phones and um, we'll have the other group place a call to our mainline number. So in my scenario, group two is going to dial 0100 and then they're going to call it. And as you can see, both of these phones show a call coming in from uh, group two user one, and then we can answer the phone call on either one of these phones. And then we'll just go ahead and terminate the call. And that just lets us see that our ring group is set up correctly, our trunk is set up correctly, our outbound uh, routes on group two are set up correctly, and our inbound routes on uh, group one's system are set up correctly as well. To save some time, I placed the other test calls without recording it, but you can see here, this is my, um, my phone 101, one, which is actually registered to my group two. So this user is uh, user one on group two. And if you take a look at the call history underneath the logs tab, you can see that I placed my call to 0100 and then 666 0100, and then so on and so forth. And all of these different patterns were successful in contacting my group one system and actually ringing my group one uh, user one, as well as ringing group one user two uh, extensions. At this point, I'm going to create um, inbound routes that will route directly to the user's extensions because although we have the main line 
uh, that people can call from other systems into our main line and reach either one of our extensions. Maybe they don't want to call the main line. They want to call, you know, user one directly or user two directly. And in order to do that, we have to add another inbound route, which I'm going to give this a description of user one. And then for the DID number, I'm going to copy it out of the lab guide. It is plus one, five, 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 six, 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 and then XX, which will be your group ID, mine is zero one. And then uh, zero one is my user's extension. For the destination, we're going to set that to extensions. And we could choose from either extension, but since this is for user one, we're going to point it to user one. And in the bottom right, we'll hit submit. And then I'm not going to hit apply config just yet because I do want to add a, another one for uh, user two, actually not user one. And then here, this will be uh, same as before, but the last digit will be a two instead of a one. And we'll set the destination to extensions, but this time we'll select user two. And then we'll hit submit again. And don't forget to hit apply config in the top right corner. With these new inbound routes added that go directly to the user's extensions, we want to test them. So we'll need to have the people in our other group, our partner group, uh, try to call our extensions. So I have to go to group two and ask them to dial 0101. And then we'll see if that call goes through. And you can see here that uh, our extension 101 is ringing. I'll end that call. Now we'll test the extension 102. And so we want the folks in group two to dial 0102. We'll place that call. And you can see that it's coming into our extension 102 now. So I'll end that call as well. I'm going to go through the seven digit, 10 digit, and then the uh, 11 digit and, and E164 test now, but I'm not going to record them and I'll be right back with the results in just a moment. And now if we take a look at the call history of my uh, phone that is registered to group 02 server, you can see that I was able to call over to 0101, 0102, and then the seven digit, 10 digit, 11 digit, and E164. These were all for uh, extension number 101, and then we did the same for extension number 102. This concludes the lab guide, but don't forget that I only tested from group two to group one. You do need to test in the other direction. So group one would need to call group two to make sure all of that configuration is set up as well. I hope that you've enjoyed it and, you know, feel free to go through and try to see what else you can do inside of free PBX that may be of interest to you.